even the meeting calendar invite is like the new first impression when you're setting up a meeting. Did you have an agenda in there? Were you clear on what the purpose was? We all know research shows within the first seven milliseconds, we're making a first impression face to face. This is the opportunity to make sure you're upgrading it in a digital world. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. For those in the audience who are starting out, who don't have great bosses presenting norms and are completely confused, what are your ground rules as we just go through phone communication, text, Slack, and email that you think should be a go-to guide for those of us who are completely confused in this digital landscape? <laughs> yeah, so I, I think let, let's go through each and every one of them. You, AJ, you said phone, email, Slack, and text. Is that right? Right. So um, we'll put phone and video together, right? Um, and so the first is just general calls. Um, my general rule of thumb with calls, if you want to set up a call with someone, you must have an agenda in advance um, or a clear purpose. Send it in advance. Uh, also know when you need a video call, otherwise opt for a phone call. And we kind of have lost the art of the phone call. It was so amazing. And we kind of, now it's an exception, not the norm. Not everything needs to be a video call and you have an opportunity to set that norm as well as even if you're on a video call, maybe for the first 10 minutes, everyone needs to be on video and then you're slide sharing. So then you can set a rule, you don't need to be on video anymore. This will also avoid a lot of distractions of people worrying about how they look on camera versus actually engaging in the content. Um, now let's go to Slack. So with Slack, I like to say, if you if you use Slack or another like instant messaging tool, um, set some norms within your team around when you email and when you use these tools. If you added Slack, you should set a standards that we will no longer email internally about these topics. Everything goes on Slack, make it the informal place for internal discussions, maybe external discussions or by email, or there is a clear cadence. Otherwise, people are using both of them for the same information where people don't know where to go to for what. Um, and even in Slack, just making sure you're clear on what are the, the channels, what's the purpose of channels to, if you want to chat, have a separate channel called Water Cooler for that to chat so that you can get to work in channels as well. And, and use simple norms, um, whether it's tagging or searchability so people can find information. Uh, this, When it comes to email, I like to say in today's world, we read email like we read websites, have a good subject line. Like get to the point in the subject line. Don't have R E R E R E or no reply, right? Um, and and in the email, remember to think about the body. The you know the, have bullet points, subject clear, clear, bold, and underlined headings. Clarify what you need from the other person at, within the first two sentences, and make sure if you're on the two line, it's to people who need to respond. If you're if they're on the CC line, they just need to read it. And hopefully it's better if they don't respond and make that clear unless they have a question. And then um, last but not least, text. I like to say text is urgent. Um, don't be a serial texter um, for things that aren't urgent, maybe within the hour, within three hours, or maybe with close friends or where there's a high trust relationship. So knowing some of these rules and when to use each of these tools will help all of us. I like to say a phone call is worth a thousand emails. Knowing when to switch from a video call to that simple one-on-one -on -one exchange can make someone's day. And and last but not least, um, be thoughtful of not being a serial texter, maybe like my dad again, who will text me five messages uh, saying, call me when it's about how to fix a fax machine and it's not urgent. <laughs> uh, I well, love that all of those, and especially the, the moment of of making sure that the, the subject, you're getting to the point, your emails are concise, Make sure what it's about is in the, the headline. Um, I myself, uh, with the work that we do at AOC, we're looking over newsletters. I'm also on uh, and, and Twitter certainly hones your messaging. And I've also know the, the things that I have on Twitter now go into other communication. And it drives me nuts when others are not following that. And I, and to even expect them to be 
to adapt to that sort of messaging is it, that's audacious on my end to expect that. But however, I'm so accustomed to it. Within a year, we're all going to be writing in copy. <laughs> that, that's right. I mean, I think in many ways, I grew up as an Indian immigrant in the U.S. and. I struggled to find my voice and so much of it was learning the cues of traditional body language. Now we're all immigrants to digital body language, but like each channel has diff is different countries with different accents and dialects and we're not going to be able to learn all the accents and dialects perfectly, but um, what is important is to set some norms so that we can move to clarity, not confusion. So I know that there are some listeners, myself included, who have done some faux pas <laughs> in these different channels going through that rundown I've recognized maybe that wasn't the best way to communicate how do you handle that when you have made a mistake and you have gone outside the norms in a way that doesn't impact your reputation that allows the other person to feel good about that miscommunication because let's be honest as we just talked about it's getting more complex every day miscommunication is going to happen but i know that's a point of anxiety for many which is leading them to not communicate at all because they don't want to make a mistake and they don't know how to handle the mistake so if we have stepped in it how do we handle that so when it comes to making mistakes, uh, I like to say in these situations, speed matters just as much as substance. So, you know, taking the time to fix it quickly is important. Maybe it's a quick follow-up thoughtful email. Maybe it's opting for a phone call to, uh, you know, reduce the miscommunication in a situation. Um, maybe it's uh, sleeping on it overnight, but not waiting too long and then coming to it with, with a thoughtful response. These are things that can make a big difference in uh, resolving, especially mistakes or when you're rushing and you send something where you don't actually answer the question and you don't look good, right? Like this is our presence today. This is how we build trust with others. It's frankly not eye contact and good physical body language anymore, um, or it's not for a while. And so at the end of the day, um, if you take the time to respond quickly, also ask yourself, is this the right medium to respond? And um, to make sure that you're responding in a way that in, in, in the channel that the other person will value, not just you. So not just saying, oops, with a smiley face, um, but uh, you know, calling them and saying, I'm, I'm sorry, I messed that up. You know, here's what I'll do next time. Will allow others to feel valued in that situation versus you just covering your own insecurity. Well, you hit the nail on the head. This is our new first impression. We drop great content each and every week and we wanna make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're gonna to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. So many of us are not meeting face to face. So having me on a CC instead of a BCC or not including the attachment is a first impression. These mistakes being rushed and being on a shot clock and not thinking through thoughtfully in our communication, when you're on the receiving end of that, especially as a stranger or someone who doesn't have much trust or know you, that gets perceived in a very negative way that I don't wanna do business with this person. I don't wanna give this person time on a phone call. I can't meet this person up in person if that's how they're handling their digital communication and not valuing my time. So we have to really be thoughtful in the speed of the communication that we're having because yeah multitasking answering that email on phone while stuck in traffic on your way to dinner thoughtlessly not including the emoji or the emotional context with that message as we know from our first impressions in the real world it can be very hard to change someone's first impression of you and if digital communication is that first impression we don't want to leave the wrong one that's absolutely right. Another thing, even the meeting calendar invite is like the new first impression when you're setting up a meeting. Did you have an agenda in there? Were you clear on what the purpose was? Uh, we all know research shows within the first seven milliseconds, we're making a first impression face to face. This is the opportunity to make sure you're upgrading it in a digital world. Absolutely. Our last question for you, we ask every guest in obviously writing this book and putting together all the research around communication, You've recognized some things about yourself, strengths and weaknesses, and we'd love to know what you consider your X factor, or what is that unique skill set and ability that's made you successful, not only in your communication, but in work? I think as a kid, um, navigating different cultures, 
and languages. Uh, I developed a good observation skill about not what people were saying, but what they were really saying, being able to read that dynamic in a room. And it's allowed me to bring the skills around collaboration to financial executives at Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, but it's allowed me to also connect with women of color and communities talking about social injustice. Um, but, and it's also allowed me to talk to Silicon Valley and tech managers. And I think that it all starts um, by understanding that we have so much more to learn from each other than to antagonize each other. Uh, it also starts with understanding that we have different, not only traditional body language, but digital body language styles. And that the answer is not connecting in the way that you like to connect with, but connecting in ways that others like to connect. Um, and last but not least, I think the, the final aspect of that X factor is I realize that the best thing I can do is be myself. So sometimes that's getting uh, my audiences to Bollywood dance or because I love to Bollywood dance or uh, making everyone laugh by sharing my biggest digital mistakes that I've made. Um, these are things that will allow us all to build connection with each other and allow others to be willing to be vulnerable as well. And I, th I think your book is incredibly important because it allows all of us to stop and think about where all of this is heading and making sure that we don't solve problems with the wrong answers. For instance, I had saw an in invention that is a camera that goes on your head so that when you're walking down the street with your phone, it will alert you if you're going to walk in anything. That is not the type of solutions that we need. And I'm old enough to know that my generation sees that and laughs, but the younger generation goes, oh, that's perfect. Now I want This won't is perfect. <laughs> you know, it's so true, Johnny. I have another one for you. There's actually a new invention where you can put a camera in the middle of your monitor so it can show like you're making eye contact on video calls. Um, so I think that's actually a better upgrade for even some of us that are not that young anymore. Um, but I think these these new innovations are here to stay. I know you have a digital body language toolkit. Where can our audience find more about the book and the toolkit if we've realized that we need to improve our digital body language? Yeah, so you can find the book at dblbook.com or available everywhere, Amazon, Barnes & Noble's Audible. I also have a new course on digital body language. It's at dblcourse.com. Uh, and you can get a special gift for listening today, uh, which is a digital body language toolkit on my website at ericadewan.com slash dbl. Thank you so much for joining us, Erica. Thank you so much for having me. 